In this video, we're going to examine how to do Holt-Winters method on quarterly data. Let's have a look at the data set. So here it is. Uh, it's actually the same data set as the monthly data, but um, it's just been um, split off into quarters instead of months here uh, for the total number of houses sold in the United States each quarter starting from 2015 onward. Um, so 500,000 just over houses sold in the first quarter of 2015 in the States and 739,000 and so on and so forth. Notice that uh, the data is still highly seasonal uh, as quarterly data. So very well suited for whole winters. Um, and so let's try this out. So uh, first thing we're going to do is make our initial seasonal factors here. Let's zoom way in here. So again, we just take our actual divided by our average uh, of the um, first year of data. So take the actual first data value and divide by the average of those first four data values. Lock that. Okay. And then drag that the whole way down. Okay. Good. So we do that for each uh, seasonal factor. Good. And then next we get our uh, initial level here. So this guy right here, by taking our actual data value, y5 here, and dividing by our um, first seasonal value. And we do the first because we're in quarter one, so we go get the seasonal from quarter one from the previous year and divide by that. That, when we do that, again, is called deseasonalizing. Okay, I talk a little bit more about this in the Holt Winters uh, monthly video. Okay, now for your trend, let's have a look at that. So that's this formula here. Uh, take your Y5 divided by your S1. So take this guy divided by S1. So the Y5 again, divided by the S1. Again, quarter one to quarter one here. Um, notice that's the same as this level. So you could have also just grabbed this level right here. You could have just done equals that. Uh, which is the same as the Y5 over S1, minus Y4 over S4. So Y4 is this value right here. Remember, Y is your actual, so we're looking at number of houses sold. So this actual 605,000 divided by seasonal four. Notice you always divide by the season you're in. So uh, quarter four actual divide by quarter four seasonal. Okay. And that will give me my trend. Basically, I've deseasonalized both of the data values. And now what I can see is just the upward or downward trend left over, if that makes any sense. Once you take off the seasonal oscillations, let's go back and look for one sec here at our data. So notice that it um, really jumps up and down here. Um, second and third quarter are incredibly high in the year for sales. Uh, first quarter, or sorry, fourth quarter, very low. Um, and so on and so forth. Um, so there's these big oscillations in your data. There's also an overall trend. You would miss out on this overall trend if you kind of get sucked into these big ups and downs. So what this trend formula does, it takes off those big ups and downs. So when you divide by the seasonal uh, factor, you kind of normalize the data and bring it back down to an average, if that makes sense. So where my cursor is would be where my deseasonalized data points would be, or my seasonally adjusted ones. They would just run kind of in the middle of all this data and just go up slowly, kind of go up by the trend, if that makes any sense. So that's what I'm doing right here with this formula. Okay, now moving on to our actual Holt Winters formulas. Now we're ready for those. So um, these guys right here. What I'm going to start with is the actual seasonal formula first, this guy. To do that, I need an alpha, beta, gamma. So let's pop in 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0.1. I always just start with those. It doesn't matter. We're going to use data, or sorry, solver to go and figure out the best ones there. Um, okay, now for my first seasonal, I'm going to take this gamma. Lock that. Always lock your reference to alpha, beta, gamma times my y, t, so my y in my current time period. Um, divide by my um, 
current level, so that guy right there, plus 1 minus gamma, so 1 minus gamma, lock my reference to gamma now, um, times st minus m, well what the heck does that mean? Um, so m is always the number of periods in the year, so in this case quarterly, m will be 4, but I don't worry about that, I just go and look, okay, I am in quarter 1, go grab my seasonal from the previous quarter 1, and times by that. Okay, good. Now that formula, as soon as you get to these main formulas, you're ready to copy all the way down to the bottom of your data set. It's okay if it says div by zero here. Um, moving on to your next one here, your level. This guy is alpha. So lock that times by the current y uh, divided by the seasonal t minus m. So again, I'm in quarter two, go get the seasonal from the previous quarter two plus one minus alpha. Lock that. So one minus alpha times the previous level plus the previous trend. So times by the previous level plus the previous trend. Again, if this isn't making any sense, go back and watch the first um, video on how to do Holt Winters on monthly data. If that still doesn't make sense, go back, make sure you've watched the Holtz method uh, videos as well. Okay, now I'm ready to go and copy this formula the whole way down. Uh, and finally, my trend. Uh, this formula is beta. Lock that times by the current level minus the previous level. Again, that will measure my upward trend once I've stripped off the seasonality. So the levels have the seasonality stripped off of them, if that makes sense. They're kind of seasonally adjusted. Um, time, sorry, plus one minus beta times by my previous trend, so times by that guy. Good. Oops, sorry. And copy that the whole way down just by double clicking. And we're almost done. Let's go now get that forecast, so it's my level plus trend, but that gets me my forecast for my next time period, times is st minus m plus 1, again I don't worry too much about that, that means current time period minus one whole year plus one time step forward, because I'm one time step forward here for my forecast, but I don't really worry about that, I just do the following, so I take my level plus my trend, they go for my forecast my next time period, and then slightly different than Holt's method where I just did my level plus my trend. Now I times by the seasonal factor and I go and I look, okay, I'm in quarter two. I'm going to go grab the seasonal factor from quarter two from the previous year. So times by the 1.13. Good. No need to lock anything there and just copy that the whole way down here. Okay. And then once I run out of data, I start using this formula right here. Okay. So um, I, when I forecast one period down, that's fine. I don't need to do anything special. When I'm two periods down, I need to start using this formula where I take my level plus two times by, so two from my k here, sorry, times by my trend, that guy, times my seasonal. Again, I go look and go, okay, I'm in quarter three. I'm going to go grab my seasonal from the previous quarter three right there. And what I like to do is lock the level and trend here because I'm going to use them again in the next time step. You don't have to. I just find it easiest. And then go change that two to a three. So for this guy, I'm forecasting three time periods ahead. The seasonal is fine. It moved down as I moved down. Beautiful. So there are my future forecasts. And then finally, go get your errors by taking your actual minus your forecast for each one. Copy that down. Oop, let's move that out of the way. Good. And then go get your RMSE here as well. Oop, I'll fix that later. So go get your RMSE the square root of the sum squared of your errors. 
divide by the count of your errors. There are lots of different error measures as well. I just like using the RMSC. There's many correct ones, the MAE, the MAPE. Um, but yeah, in this, uh, in this series, we're just looking at the RMSC. Now we're not done because we need to go and minimize this RMSC by using solver. Same as usual, so we're going to go minimize the L7 by changing, again, the alpha, beta, gamma here. So L4 through L6, subject to the constraint that they're both uh, L4 through to L6 are between 0 and 1. Hit solve, and here we go. So here's our best alpha, beta, gamma. Good. Notice the trend, interestingly enough, stays exactly at 1. Okay. 